In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to have the date in your copyright footer automatically updated using a short code. You're going to be able to copy paste code right from my website, paste it into your functions file or into a plugin. I'll show you how to do both. And then you just have a short code to enter into the spot wherever you want the year to appear. And the year is automatically updated for you every single year, which is awesome and a huge time saver. If you have any questions for this tutorial, please leave them down below this video. I try to get to every one of them. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're starting this video right now. So the years we're talking about in this tutorial are down here, 2014 and 2019, in the copyright section in the footer. And the 2019 is hard-coded, meaning I actually type the numbers into the footer template and they can't be automatically changed. With this piece of code right here, we're going to fix that. We're going to copy and paste this code. I'm just going to grab it right now. And we're going to copy this. And first, I'm going to show you how to add this to your functions.php file. And then I'm going to show you how to use a plugin if you don't want to use the functions file. To get to the functions file, I'm going to log into my SiteGround hosting account. I'm going to go down to File Manager. I'm going to open the root directory for my website. Click on Go. Go to WP Content and then themes, and then find the currently active theme, which in my case is WP Learning Lab dash child. If you want to know how to make a child theme, link to the tutorial in the card up above that shows you how. If you're not sure if you need a child theme, I've linked to the tutorial in the description down below that explains whether you need a child theme or not. Editing your functions file is an example of when you need a child theme. If you don't want to have a child theme, but you still want to use this function, then you have to use the plugin, which I show in the second half of this tutorial. So I'm going to open the child theme folder, I'm going to open the functions file, Right click on it, click on edit, and edit again. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. And I'm going to hit return, return again, and paste in my code. I'm going to add some more carriage returns so you can see it. Here's the code right here. I don't have to change anything at all. And to add the year to our website, we use this short code right here, which is not in the code on the website. If I go back here, it's not in this actual code, I just have it right above, so you can copy it from here. For some reason, when I add this to this little code widget in the website, it messes up. It doesn't display properly. So we're going to copy this short code. I'm going to do it from here. You can copy it from the blog. I'm going to get rid of this white space at the bottom of a functions file. It turns out white space at the bottom of a functions file can cause 500 errors. Not 500 errors, the 500 error is what I meant to say. Click on Save to save this. Come back out here, let's refresh. If your site goes white, or you see a 500 error, go back into the functions file and undo what you did. Most common problems that I see happen is people will paste code inside of other pieces of code. So they might think right here, oh, there's a space right here, I can just add code right below here. Might not work that way. Might crash your site. If you have even a single character missing, if I take out this semicolon, it's going to crash the site. If I add a period somewhere, if I add an extra letter somewhere where there shouldn't be one, it's going to crash the site. So just undo what you did, and then your site will be back online. You also have the option of backing up your functions file first before you edit it. So in here, right click on the functions file, click on copy, and then I'm going to move it one level up, otherwise I get an error. It's going to copy that file, and that file now exists out here. I'm just going to change the name to functions dash backup so you know what to backup drag that back into our child theme folder now we have a backup that we can then revert to if something goes wrong so if you need that do that I'm pretty comfortable in the functions file if my site crashes I'm not really concerned I just undo what I did but if you want to have that backup for a little bit of peace of mind make sure you do that now we have our custom function in place we need to add that short code to our template files so let's go into the dashboard and I'm using Elementor for this, but you can copy and paste this short code anywhere. Anywhere that accepts short codes, this will show the current year for you. So that's pretty awesome. So inside our website footer, which is where our, our years are listed, I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor, and here they are right here. So 2019, like I said earlier, is hard coded, meaning it's typed right into this widget here. So I'm gonna open and close square brackets, type in the word year, and click on update. And now I'm gonna head back out to the front end, scroll down to the bottom, we see it's 2019. When I refresh, it is now 2020. That's how easy it is. And that's gonna keep updating every year for perpetuity. 
So if you have this in all your websites, they'll all update automatically, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, especially if you have lots of websites. So the other way we can do this is exit to dashboard and then go into our functions file and cut this out. Let's control X that, get rid of the white space at the bottom. Save, come back out here. Now the user is gonna to be totally gone because we, or it's gonna show the short code, sorry. Because the function's gone, the short code's still there. So now I'm gonna use a plugin to add that piece of code to our website instead of the functions file. And then that year short code should be replaced by 2020 again. So let's go to plugins and add new. And let's look up my custom functions. I have a link to this plugin down below in the description. It'll take you to this page right here. This is the plugin I use whenever I'm adding custom functions through the website, which I do sometimes. I'm gonna click on install now on this guy right here. It has a lot of great reviews, a lot of installs, updated recently. It's always best to back up your site before you add a new plugin. So if you need help with that, link to the tutorial down in the description below to help you back up your site. And if something goes wrong, which is pretty rare, but if something does go wrong, you have a backup. Click on install now when you're ready and then activate. And now under settings, we have a new option called PHP inserter. And all we have to do is paste our code right in here and then turn it on. We do not add opening and closing PHP tags. It looks like this. There's the opening one and here is the closing one. We do not add those. This will insert the code right into the functions file, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. And we'll save changes when we're ready. And let's take a look. Once this is saved, let's go out here and refresh. Hopefully this little notification disappears. There's our 2020, it's back. So that worked. That put the code where it had to go. And now we have our short code working again. Under the usage tab for this plugin, here it says, please read the instructions on our blog on what to do in case of website crash. So we go there. It's gonna show you this really quick, just in case this is something that happens to you. It's rare, but it can happen. So if this does happen, we go into the WP content forward slash plugins forward slash my custom functions. So let's go there. Let's close out our functions file. Let's go back to our website root, which is the web or the folder where all our files are contained. Go to wp-content and then plugins. And there are so many here. My custom functions. We have to rename this file from start to stop. Now if I come back out to the site and refresh, short code will be broken again, just shows the year, and that stopped the plugin. And that's essentially what it says on this blog post. Change the file name from start to stop, and then it says to come back into your short code editor and try to fix the problem. If you know what the problem is, if you can't find out what the problem is, you can't figure it out, I recommend just turning it off and not using it. But if you can figure out the problem, that's great. And then when you're ready to try it again, we change the file name from stop to start. Come back in here, change the file name to start. Let's make it all caps because that's how they had it. And now come back out to the site, refresh, and now 2020 should be back. And there it is. Now that you have the years on your websites automatically updating, it's time to make sure you have your security locked in. Check out this tutorial right up here where I show you the top 10 mistakes that I see over and over again on WordPress sites. Make sure you check that out and then check out this video down here where I show you how to stop brute force attacks in their tracks. Both these tutorials are great for security. Check them out and click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.